Without the ocean, there is no life. While Bill was developing business cases for Vancouver Island, he learned that seaweed was going to change the world. After an hour on the phone with one of Canada's most knowledgeable seaweed experts, Bill's entrepreneurial spirit was sparked, not because he needed a new project, but because of the positive social, environmental, and economic benefits this budding sector offered. Seaweed farming helps feed our growing populations, helps revitalize coastal communities, and reverses human impact on the oceans. Only 2% of our global food production comes from the ocean, but oceans cover 70% of our planet. Seems like a no-brainer to me. Welcome, I'm Christine Cuvelier of Culinary Concierge. As an executive chef and Canada's leading global culinary trendologist, I think about and taste the future of food. I help my clients launch on trend, on time, great tasting food and menu items. The definition of innovation is the introduction of something that tastes great, is good for you and good for the planet. And you know that could be the definition of seaweed. Cascadia seaweed are leaders in the rising tide of seaweed innovation. For the past few months, I've been experimenting in my test kitchen, making products with seaweed in them that taste great, that are good for you and good for the planet. For the Seaweed Festival, I reached across Canada, coast to coast, and talked to all my chef friends. They've been experimenting in their kitchens with Alaria and sugar kelp. Every day for the next seven days of seaweed, log on, watch a chef video, be inspired by their recipes. Let's make this the year kelp is cool. And don't forget, it's all about taste, taste, taste. Hey gang, my name is Chef Dave Bonichel, and I'm here today to talk to you about an amazing product that we've always known as in the sea, but now the fine folks at Cascadia Seaweed have brought it here to be able for chefs and home cooks to be able to use in their house and incorporate it into their meals to add nutritious and delicious flavor. So we have Alaria Ascolenta, or winged kelp, and then we also have a bull kelp, which is a little bit on the sweeter side, where this one has a little more herb notes, more herbaceous, and a little more salinity to it, I found. This one we're gonna use for a, a pizza garnish. We're gonna use it on top so it gets a little crispy crunchy in the oven. And this guy, since it was on the sweeter side, we thought we'd incorporate it into the sauce and then use it as a crunchy garnish on the rim as well. So we started by dehydrating them. So we took the bull kelp, dehydrated, and the uh, alaria, and then we, uh, we just ground them up. We're gonna fold it into a little pizza, into the dough. And I'll show you how to guys how we're gonna do that as we go along here. And then we're gonna put some on top, watch it get crunchy in the oven, and be super texturally sound. It's gonna be a great pizza. I'm excited to do this for you guys today. Let's go. So our bull kelp arrived from Cascadia Seaweed, beautifully fresh. This is the oh. bull kelp. And then we have the Alaria underneath. Look at how gorgeous that is. Wee. So first things first, I just wanted to take some of it and blanch it off just to set that flavor and see how the texture is, check the salinity, and get started cooking with it. After blanching, I just dropped into an ice bath to cool it down so that I could start dehydrating it and working some of it into our sauce. Cooking. So I'm going to set aside our blanched fresh seaweed for a second. This is our Alaria and our bull kelp. We're going to add it to our pizza later on here. We're going to put some of this on it before we bake it. And this guy, we've dehydrated some here as well. And then uh, we'll put that on the crust and in the sauce. So I just want to talk about this for a second. Here's our dehydrated bull kelp. You can see it's nice and brittle. It turns into really cool chips. You can use this as a salad garnish. Uh, like I said, today we're going to crumble it around on the outside of our pizza crust to give it a little more texture. Uh, and then I also blended it right into the sauce because it was really, really sweet and had a really uh, soft, luxurious texture. I think you can also use it as an dessert as well, maybe a creme anglaise uh, to make into a, a cool ice cream or even a creme brulee or something like that. Uh, the Alaria is really neat as well. It's much more savory, almost has like herb notes. 
You could really, really taste the sea. As soon as it came out of the package, I, it reminded me of like Japanese style cooking, like using the uh, kombu and different things to incorporate um, into the dish. But this one was really neat. Really, really enjoyed it. So it's very simple to do. I just laid out the bull kelp in the Ilaria, set it at 125, and let so it dehydrate. So fresh, so unbelievably fresh. So we actually found a tiny little spot prawn just wrapped up in the seaweed. Unreal. And I learned spot prawns inhabit the seaweed. bring in my blender here. We're just going to grind some of this up. Let's we'll start with the Alaria. We want it to be a nice fine powder. We're going to incorporate that into our pizza dough. So we're going to have the Alaria in the sea, in the pizza dough. So we have a nice seaweed crust. And then we're going to have the uh, bull kelp in our sauce and crumbled on the outside like a Parmesan little crust to give it some nice texture. Let's go ahead and grind these up. see there got a nice fine powder just gonna take that got a little strainer here just gonna drop that seaweed straight in and we're just gonna make sure it's nice and fine so it incorporates into our dough evenly you can see it right there just delicious Let's just take a closer look at that. So we're just going to pop it in our blender, give it a quick grind. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and get the blender out of here and start putting together our dough. So, we have our Alaria, find the ground sea seaweed. We got our warm water, salt, yeast, and flour. This is all we're gonna need for our pizza crust. Uh, the only extra thing you'll need is, I just have a little bit of extra flour just to work on the bench so when we go to shape out our dough. So, let's get our get your mixer. put this together. All right guys, this, this recipe couldn't be any simpler. We got uh, this will make about three doughs. So we got two cups of flour, and everything just goes right in. Got our yeast, our salt, and our warm water. We're gonna drop that hook and let that guy go for about five minutes, seven minutes maybe, just until the bowl's nice and clean and the dough is smooth and elastic. Now I'm just going to add in our seaweed powder. I like to use about two tablespoons for this recipe. And now we're just going to let that mix. And keep mixing. Still mixing. Alright, so we're finally all mixed up here. And uh, we're just going to pop out our dough. Just going to give it a couple rolls on our bench here. But you can see it's nice and smooth and elastic. And you can see all those little pieces of uh, Alauria through there. Nutritious and delicious flavors. This is going to make a really unique and cool pizza. So we just want to take our dough now. You can use the same bowl that you mixed in. You can use another stainless steel bowl. You can use olive oil. You can use spray grease. Whatever you want. Just gonna drop that guy back in there. We're gonna saran wrap this, leave it at room temperature for one hour, punch it down. I like to do 125 gram balls of dough. And then from there, we're gonna drop it in the fridge. You can go for 24 hours. 24 hours is a, I guess a minimum, at least just to get that nice texture, the nice crunch on the dough. 
48 hours is better. 72 hours is even better. You'll have a much, much tastier dough. Beautiful crust. And uh, this is going to be really exciting. So let's get this uh, hanging out at room temp. All right. So after your dough has rested at room temperature for an hour, you want to shape out your balls. And uh, like I said, I use about 125 grams, 150 grams. Seems to be a nice eight, eight inch pizza or so. And then you just want to give it a little bit of oil. You can use olive oil, canola oil, or again, the spray fat, whatever you like. Just give that a little bit of grease, saran wrap them up. They don't have to be super tight. You want a little room for expansion for growth here because they're going to ferment in the fridge and, and slowly bubble. And you can see some of the yeast bubbles already coming together. So this guy's going in the fridge, 24, 48, 72 hours, whatever you prefer. And then by the magic of television, we have our doughs that we uh, we had already made previous to this. So we have our resting them, resting doughs, and now these are the doughs that would have already fermented. Uh, these ones I pushed for 72 hours, and you can see the yeast bubbles bursting right out of there. We're gonna make two pizzas today. We're gonna have one with the um, Larry on it and a little bit of um, North, uh, Northern Pacific shrimp, some Nduya, which is a spicy spreadable salami. And then obviously we're gonna finish it with that kelp and let it crisp up in the oven. And then the other one, we're just do a little classic margarita with some of that uh, bull kelp crust on there and uh, some just to finish it off. And obviously we did make our sauce with some of the bull kelp as well, which is just delicious. And I just blended that right in. We're gonna use that as our base for the white pizza. All right, I just wanted to talk quickly about the ingredients that we're gonna use on our pizzas today. This is the bechamel sauce that I was talking about where we took a bit of bull kelp and blended right into it. We got some North Pacific shrimp, we got our spicy spreadable salami, the anduja, and then we're just going to make a classic margarita with some mozzarella, tomato, tomato sauce, and then some of the bull kelp instead of basil. And then we're also going to finish our other pizza with the bull kelp as well. So let's get making some pizzas. We just have a little bit of our excess flour. It's going to lightly flour our bench. And we're just going to pick one of these guys straight up. Hit it with a little flour and just start working our dough. I like to work it like a steering wheel and then punch it down a little bit on both sides. Then it'll start to stretch a little bit more for you. We're just gonna set up our second dough here. Mmm, it's gonna be so tasty. You can smell the seaweed in it, it's amazing. All right. All right, so a little bit of our seaweed sauce goes down. Get a few of those shrimp. I think this is going to work really well together with the uh, the seaweed, bring all the flavors of the sea together. The funniest about this, the reason I was really inspired to make this was when we pulled the seaweed out of the package, there was actually a tiny prawn that was wrapped up in the kelp. So it kind of started the whole idea for this pizza right there where we were like, why don't we feature something from the sea and with it? So it's a really cool inspiration and it's been a really, really cool product to work with. A couple pieces of the Anduja. Get a bit of our cheese. Just a little bit there on the bottom. And I've just taken our kelp and just cut it into thin strips. Just gonna lay that across the top so we get nice and crispy and crunchy. Just a little more cheese on top. And then I have a special little treat that we like to put on our crust for the pizza. And we, we did this for the, um, for the seaweed pizza when we trialed this and it was amazing. So we had a little bit of garlic powder, mix that up. Then we got our 
ground sugar kelp. It's going in right there. Now we have basically a little seaweed butter. I'm just going to brush the edge of that rim. This is going to add a beautiful little note of seaweed on the, the final crunch. Give us some great texture to the exterior of the pizza. Finish it off. We're going to add just a few little sesame seeds, which are also going to give us some great crunch. And I think work really well with the seaweed and make our pizza look awesome. Let's get this in the fire. We're going to build our margarita. Got a little bit of tomato sauce on the bottom. Got our fresh cheese. I just like to tear it up, put it right on. A couple slices of tomato. And our beautiful bull kelp. We're using the bull kelp on this guy and a little bit of the alaria as well. And we're gonna give it that funky crust as well. A little bit of that butter brushed on. This one we're gonna skip the sea, uh, sesame seeds though. It's gonna go with that nice seaweed crust. All right. I chose the Alaria for the herbaceous notes that would work well, I think, with the shrimp uh, versus the bull kelp, which is a little bit sweeter and I think would really complement the tomato sauce. And, uh, and the cheese and everything else and really highlight that seaweed. So both seaweed, it's both the Laria in the crust, but each one's garnished a little bit different. All right, let's fire this up. <laughs> Cooking up pies in beautiful Prince Edward Island. Can't beat that view, eh? This guy's ready. Ooh, look at that pie. Nice crispy kelp on there. A little shrimp, the andouille. Let's get pizza number two. Beautiful bull kelp pizza. A little bit of margarita style. Let's go. We got two phenomenal looking pizzas here. We got our margarita with our beautiful bull kelp on there. You can see it's a little bit crunchy now. And our beautiful margarita pizza. And then our taste of the sea with our alaria, our North Pacific shrimp, and our spicy salami. I don't know about you guys, but I am starving. We got a beautiful pizza there, but I'm going for this guy. That's the one I want to know about got our beautiful seaweed crust, our shrimps, our bull kelp, and do you. Let's go. Mmm. Unbelievable. The seaweed flavor really comes through in the dough, and it's an exceptionally good flavor. The crunch of the seaweed on top is amazing. I highly recommend this, guys. Thanks for watching.